Hey folks, today I want to tell you about 360s by Humminbird. So here I've got the old one, the AS360, and here I've got the Mega360. Now, if you have used the old one, or if you are interested in either one of them, you really need to understand this because they're very different things. One does not really replace the other one. I mean, they're, they're similar, but they're very different. So if you have a single helix on your boat, you need to really understand the situation that I'm going to explain to you in this video. Um, this may be one of the more boring videos on YouTube, but sonar's complicated and I'm going to try to take you through it. So as a sonar search and recovery diver, um, I love the 360, right? So I had just side scan sonar on my Helix and that was great, but it's actually hard to go back and locate the things you've seen because everything's behind you, right? Everything that the transducer on the transom sees is it's recording what's going by. So you see something really interesting. Of course, you can you can put a point on it and you can try to find your way back. But when it comes to actually diving, especially in zero or low visibility water, you need to know exactly where something is. OK, so that's where these beauties. So this is the AS360. This is uh, this came out about three years ago, I think I bought my first one. So what I use this uh, to dip this in the water once I pulled the boat to a stop, right? I found an item of interest. I've got close to where I think it is, anchor the boat, secure it usually with two anchors. So I don't want it to, to turn or drift because I want to know bearing and distance. Put this in and mount this on the back. And I just use a trolling motor mount because it's a lot cheaper and more flexible. Put this in, turn it on. And this actually uh, has a, um, uh, the it has two cords on it. One of them, uh, this is how it comes out of the unit, but generally it goes into a, a coaxial cable, right? This is the old one. So the coaxial cable then goes right into the back of um, of the Ethernet. So it goes right into the Ethernet of any kind of unit from the ones from 2012 all the way up to the new helixes. So uh, it didn't use the plug for the transducer. Transducer was still attached to the to the transom. So this was great because I could just, uh, it would automatically sense that it was on and they would say, do you want this to start running? I'd say yes. And then it would start painting out around the boat and I could see both the bearing and the distance of the item I'm looking for. Um, the downside of this is uh, this model was only available in 800 megahertz or 800 kilohertz rather. So often I'd see something on my mega uh, side imaging sonar and I'd see some pretty good detail and then I would go back to actually locate it and this would not have nearly the, the same detail. I'd have to reimagine the picture and sometimes that was made it harder. So I like this. It was a great thing. I would keep it stored in the boat. I would pull it out and attach it and use it when I needed it. So the mega 360. Let's talk about the mega. The mega 360 is... 1.24 megahertz, right? It's almost twice, not quite twice, but the it's 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 a lot more resolution than the 800 kilohertz. Um, and so when I bought this, I thought, great, it works the same way. It actually doesn't work the same way. It's configured differently, and they have a different philosophy for this. So if you have just a single helix or um, Solex at your helm, you're going to want to really understand this because you can't easily switch back between your side imaging transducer and this. It has a kind of a different philosophy. So what do we have here? We have the same power cord. For, first of all, let's look at the unit. Um, it's a little bit bigger. Actually, this one actually has the transducer. You can see it actually spins. You can see it spin. Um, it's about four or five inches. It's got a wet switch here on the top. Uh, it's got a directional thing so you know, because it's important that you line this up with the direction of the boat so it paints the correct picture of what's where. Um, so if you look at the old one, uh, it's, it's in a sealed case. Nothing moves here, but, um, but inside there's a unit that spins, all right? And then that's the 800 kilohertz. It also has the directional thing. It's a lot less. It doesn't have a wet switch on it, um, and it's just a lot less volume, okay? So why? I mean, I can't say I'm disappointed in this because I love the imaging. What I'm disappointed about or what's been a challenge is the philosophy that they chose to make this, right? So... Uh, on the new Mega 360, what it does is the way this attaches, and it has this big 16-pin um, plug. This actually ends up going into a uh, 
into the transducer. This will not go into your ethernet. This has to go into the, tra into the transducer port of the Helix or some generation three thing. So I only have one Helix 10 and it's a generation three. So um, I can put my regular transducer on or I can put this on. But what the, the way they've designed it, you buy a Y cord, okay? A Y cord is about 60 bucks and um, you can connect both transducers, but it's not just a switch back and forth between the transducers. The way they've wired it, one of the transducers is sending certain information and the other one is sending other information all at once. So down imaging, it's coming from the, tran it's coming from the transom. Um, water temperature, coming from the transom. Depth is coming from the transom. What's coming from this? Well, now this is your side imager. Right? So when you say you want side imaging, this lines up fore and aft, and then this, it just goes through the water without turning. This becomes your, your side imaging transducer. When you say stop, I want to do 360, I'm anchoring, then you turn that a mode on, and then this starts to spin. And if you can adjust it to any region, it's really great. The problem is, for me, is I like to have, um, the problem for me, is I, if you've watched my other videos, you know I'm on the Columbia River and all year long we have between one and a half and three knots of current, maybe three and a half knots, that's a lot. And I'm searching big areas. So I do not want to be dragging this, you know, at, so let's say I'm going up river, right? So I want to be covering four or five miles an hour over the ground. So that means I'm doing like six knots through the water. Dragging this at six knots through the water is not easy. I'm working on a way to mount it, but I think that, uh, uh, that is something that I'm not really happy with. I would love to keep the old transducer. The old transducer is great. Like I am done searching. I want to just jump up on a plane. That transducer is out of the way. This one, if I left it in the water and I'm going six knots and I have a pretty stout, um, stout uh, mount and then I goose it to go up on a plane, I, I think this would get ripped off. Also, it has to be at least this deep. Remember, it's got a wet switch. So you can't just dip the bottom of it where the transducer is. They want you to dip the entire unit. Which is great, except that, uh, except that I need to remember to take it in each time um, because it'll, it could get pulled off or certainly bent back. So this unit gives you your side imaging when you, uh, when you have it configured out with the Y thing. So it is possible to take the, uh, to pull the transducer, um, the side imaging transducer out of the back of your helix and put in this right into the back then you don't have a depth finder because the depth finder comes from the other one. If you don't have both, you miss out on some things. I don't use down imaging sodar, so I don't care about that so much, but I do care about the depth. So I have another, another depth finder and all speeds in, you know, mounted in the hull, through, through hull transducer. Anyway, so this, the, the first one was great because it was super plug and play. It didn't affect anything else. It just, when you needed it, you used it. This is going to take a lot more thought, right? Because it's more of a system, an integrated system. So what this is really good for, and I can see this, is if I was a bass fisherman or a lake fisherman, and I want to have a helix up on the bow, like dedicated for, um, dedicated for casting, basically. I've got it on a, on a trolling motor. I use it a little bit of side imaging for slow, slow trolling, and then I use the 360. That would be great. And then on the helm, you can use the side imaging and also then have all the benefits of depth and temperature and all that stuff, and the down imaging. So in this case, if you only have one generation three unit, you have to figure out how to integrate this. It's not easy. Um, so the Y cord is, is good, except then you don't have a very robust, I'm not gonna call this a very robust side imaging trans bond transducer. It's it's robust in its how it functions, but I don't think it's physically the best thing to put behind the boat if you have to go six knots up current to do a you know a 10 mile search for a lost vehicle or boat. But I will work it out and once I get the mount on the boat um, figured out, I will share it with you. And hopefully I can come up with something that I can plane with and also um, scan with. All right. That was a lot. Hopefully you have any questions, um, please put them in the comment section. I would love to engage with you about this. I love sonar and this is a little bit complicated, but so worth it. So, so here we are out at the boat and I wanted to show you my thinking so far on mount, right? And, Cause at first the old way I would use the, um, the AS 360 is I just had a temporary mount on the transom when I wanted to deploy it, stop the boat, put it down. It's great. Now that this has the SI, the side imaging unit on it, I'm going to need to figure out a way to pull it through the water. And so, um, and it also has the wet switch on top. So it needs to be submerged to a certain extent. So this is what I've done so far. So um, here's the old transducer for the uh, side imaging transducer. 
uh, and that also does down imaging, temperature, and um, and uh, depth. Then here's the 360. So these are now both hooked up through the Y cable. So I've done this in a way that this um, can open and close, and then if it has a uh, stress, this can roll off. But it's right now that's a little too loose because once I do about five knots through the current, it uh, it starts to come up. So that's an easy one. I'll work on that over time. Um, hopefully, it'd be really nice if, if uh, you know, just looking at the angles here, if once once it planes, wouldn't that be great if the water just came out underneath here and it had missed this and this was able to withstand the subplaning kind of ramp up to being on a plane. That would be so nice, but I need to experiment with that a little bit. Um, while I'm down here, let me just show you what I love about this boat is it has this outboard bracket, right? That means that the transom of the boat is actually two feet plus from the uh, from the motor, right? So the motor's here. So what that means is when this transducer is working, it is nowhere near the shock waves of the propeller. So I can go six knots up current and still get great uh, great sonar scanning without the impact of the shock waves, which tend to kind of add a lot of noise to the signal. So it allows me to do big areas of searching without a lot of um, issues. You can see here that's going to be a problem again because I'm going to have to maybe move it someplace up forward here. So it's all in the works. Okay, well, if you like more sonar videos, let me know. And make sure you subscribe to my channel, uh, Underdog Dive, because I will make more sonar videos because I love sonar and it's complicated and it's not easy and we should definitely be sharing this info. Thanks, folks.